Three FBI agents are set to testify before Congress about the FBI's corrupt handling of the Clinton email investigation. One of those agents actually ran the Clinton investigation, and he resigned over FBI and DOJ leadership efforts to kill the case. His testimony will come before the House Judiciary and Oversight and Government Reform Committees next month. My next guest is a former Trump campaign advisor. He says he was targeted by a possible FBI intermediary, not once, but twice during the spring of 2016. Joining us tonight is Michael Caputo, and it is good to have you with us, Michael. Thanks for being here. Let's, let's Thank start. you, Lou. I really appreciate the invitation. Uh, let's start with, first of all, uh, I have been uh, in, engrossed, in, as everyone I think is, uh, in the special counsel and its reaction uh, to the evidence and to the testimony that they're hearing. Now, you've talked to the special counsel about this, and I'm fascinated by the reaction uh, of the special counsel. Could you share that with us? Sure. I, I was approached in the first week of May in 2016 by a, 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 a former federal government national security contractor who said that the NSA had emails and that, that we should get, you know, he could get, help us get a hold of them. Uh, emails that related to Hillary Clinton. This was when Hillary Clinton had uh, deleted 30,000. Remember, we were all looking for him. Right. And, uh, of course, I, after a couple of weeks, I turned it down because it was just too close to classified information. I didn't want to touch anything. That's a, sure. that's a crime. But, you know, two years later, I, I mean, actually, uh, in, the, in the early part of 2016, I told the, the House Intelligence Committee about this. Uh, they took down the information. And then in the early part of May, I told the Senate Intelligence Committee uh, they weren't even taking notes. And frankly, I offered them the timeline I was reading from, and they didn't take a copy. And then this I told the, the Mueller team the this... same thing the next day on May 2nd, and it didn't seem to even interest them, and they didn't take a copy either. And that had my, you know, I was really scratching my head about that until this whole thing came up with the spy on the Trump campaign. And it became very clear to me this could be the very same thing. Of yes. course, I, I had wanna... a second attempt to uh, contact me in late May, one that my attorney says I can't talk about because the Mueller team was very interested in it, wanted to talk about it a lot, and knew more about it than I did. So I'm really you. looking forward to going to the Department of Justice Office of Inspector General. You know, this whole expanded uh, uh, investigation the president demanded over the weekend, I think that was a masterstroke, Lou. What the president did this weekend gave me the opportunity to share this with someone who will know if these are FBI informants or not. The, the president has promised absolute transparency. Uh, now, whether or not the officials of the Justice Department, the same corrupt officials in some cases that were there uh, previously, the uh, officials in the FBI, the top five are gone, so the odds are better within the FBI itself. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see because this president, uh, the American people, as I said earlier on this broadcast, are going to rally around this president on the issue of transparency. Uh, no president has ever done this, and it's, uh, it's remarkable already uh, how popular this president is. I, I want to put up a full screen here, Michael, if I may, to, to just put in context uh, something that occurred, uh, as we're pointing out. You were talking about uh, early May uh, when you were contacted, but George Papadopoulos was also contacted in that general time frame. Late May, you and Papadopoulos, again, are contacted. And in July, Carter Page is contacted in London. Uh, this is the, uh, the Australian contact, the highest-ranking diplomat, suddenly, was, uh, was interested in Carter Page. And in September, Sam Clovis uh, w was contacted. It, this, this begins to take on uh, the appearance of a, a broader targeting, I think, than anyone possibly imagined. Your, your thoughts? I agree. In fact, what happened to me, uh, if it is, in fact, uh, an operation trying to, you know, trying to set me up with uh, classified information or Hillary's emails or whatever it was the first and the second time, you know, it, it looks a lot like what happened to, to, to George Papadopoulos. And, you know, I was pretty harsh on Papadopoulos when, when it came down what, right. what he was being uh, charged with. I really feel badly about calling him a coffee boy. I've apologized to him today. I mean, he really got screwed. Our country failed George Papadopoulos and his family. Carter Page, you know, didn't take the bait, and he's, you know, he's a, a gentleman about it. But what happened to me may end up being a great big misunderstanding. But, Lou, it could also be the keys to the kingdom of God. 
And I was shocked that nobody from any of the investigations wanted to know anything about it. Right. And now that I'm, you know, the president has, you know, I, I understand the skepticism about the, and the inspector general at the DOJ, but I was impressed with his report about Scott McCabe. So I'm a bit optimistic about this inspector general and what he'll do. And I know people were kind of hard on the president about this, thinking it was a half step. But it's something that's happening immediately now. I'm actually able to, my, my attorney is sending a letter to the inspector general asking for an appointment. I'm hoping it happens in the very short term. If the president had demanded a special count, another special counsel, we might have been waiting months. I, I'm really optimistic about this. And I think the well, president's uh, move this weekend demanding that investigation was an absolute masterstroke. I agree. And it is also, uh, is, uh, is, is nearly in every instance uh, the case. It is also the right thing to do. This president seems to have Truly. an unerring sense of uh, what to do and absolute transparency from our uh, Justice Department and the FBI. These, uh, these corrupt institutions are going to have to be uh, purged. That's all there is to it uh, with the leadership that they have uh, tolerated for way too long. Michael Caputo, thanks for being with us. We appreciate you sharing uh, your story. And uh, like you, we're, we're all watching... Uh, to see the, the next moment's uh, events. Uh, we only know one thing. Day by day, they're sure to arrive. Thanks so much, Michael Caputo. Yes, they are. Top FBI and Department of Justice officials giving lawmakers classified briefings on the origins of Spygate, presumably. The Obama administration operation that used one or more spies to surveil President Trump's 2016 presidential campaign. Today's briefing, initially meant for Republican leaders of the House Intelligence uh, and Oversight Committees, Devin Nunes and Trey Gowdy. The Department of Justice, however, agreed then to brief the bipartisan so-called Gang of Eight in a separate meeting after Democratic lawmakers, uh, who claim there is no spygate, whined and complained about not being briefed about it at all. Joining us tonight, Chris Farrell, Director of Research Investigation for Judicial Watch. Chris, it's unclear what they saw, what they were briefed on, what they actually witnessed with their own eyes. I think this is a Justice Department uh, expectations management meeting. They wanted to be able to say, hey, look, we were forthcoming and we held meetings and we briefed you. But I have a very high percentage uh, belief that it was all very controlled and contrived, uh, that it was carefully managed that the Justice Department and FBI were less than forthcoming. Uh, and it sort of allowed all the parties to say, oh, yes, we met and we talked about it. Uh, but I doubt very seriously whether Mr. Nunez and Mr. Gowdy are entirely satisfied with the answers they got. How soon will we find out? As soon as they hold a press conference. I mean, uh, they, I, I would encourage them not to be shy. I don't want them, obviously, to violate any security, uh, you know, restrictions, mm -hmm. but they can certainly get in front of a camera and opine about how the meeting went, what was conducted, how frank they were, how many documents they saw. There's all sorts of details without discussing the actual substance that uh, those gentlemen can convey to the public, and I think uh, they have a duty to do so. The president, making it very clear, he wants uh, total transparency absolute transparency on the Department yep. of Justice and the FBI conduct behavior uh, and its leadership particularly. I mean, the, 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 the Department of Justice and the FBI have been stripped of some of their uh, senior leadership uh, in some cases uh, in the FBI, all of it over the top five positions. Yes. And people are not even, ta I mean, there's a debate with the Dems in Congress about whether or not they were culpable, whether they were guilty of, of, of breaching our Constitution and, and law. My God, what is the debate about? It's clear and straightforward. Yeah, I mean, the Democrats at this point are chained to a story. And the problem is the story keeps shifting and rolling around and evolving because they can't get because the story straight. Because they can't get the, Of course, because they can't get the story straight. So you have to keep playing double talk word games to try to get around it. Um, you know, the president, and I would encourage the president to do this, with a stroke of a pen, he can order the release of these documents. He doesn't have to talk about it or around it or kind of hope out loud that someone does something. He can have it happen with the stroke of a pen. It's discretionary on his part. 
And uh, as, we, as we look at what is happening, John Brennan writing all sorts of nonsense, whether it's He's on Twitter. He's lost his mind. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I couldn't argue the point, certainly. He's disgraced himself. I'm waiting for him to post a selfie, you know, of himself wrapped in the American flag. He's gone off the deep end. And the reason why is because he's terrified. He's been caught. And uh, more to be revealed. And Robert Mueller, what, what state is his mind in? What state is his investigation? It's been two years with the FBI investigation that preceded it by almost a year. And now the more than a year since uh, Robert Mueller was made special counsel and has carried out an investi investigation that's produced exactly nothing. Yeah, now agents are purportedly, uh, they've been dispatched to Israel to run down leads. I thought this was Incredible. about Russian collusion. Yeah. Uh, this is a slow motion deflation. He's going to have to make, you know, get a couple of scalps to say he did what he did. But, of course, half of those, half the indictments are Russian, so he'll never set foot in the United States. So uh, I think this, I'd like to believe uh, it's winding down because there is no there there. Uh, but it's such a political football. That also would so presume a lot of integrity on the part of the special counsel, <laughs> uh, which and obviously it, And his staff, which is utterly compromised. Right. It, 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 it's stunning stuff to, to witness this. Uh, T.S. Uh, uh, Ellis, the yeah. district court judge, uh, who is going to rule, apparently, on whether or not the special counsel exceeded uh, its uh, mandate uh, and its uh, scope, uh, envisioned at least under the August 2nd uh, uh, memorandum. Uh, this is, uh, we're still waiting, and he seemed to be the most animated um, and intelligent, frankly, judge to take up the issue. What do you expect, uh, if anything at all? Well, I mean, uh, I believe what he says, and he's on the record from the Brett bench expressing great skepticism about uh, what the letter of the scope memo says versus the conduct of the special counsel. You know, the 4 a.m. no-knock warrant against Manafort's house uh, is a combination publicity stunt and threat. Uh, it has no realm, it has no uh, normal sort of existence in the, in the ordinary scope of an investigation like this. And I think that Judge Ellis sees through it, and he knows that the cast of characters mm -hmm. under Mueller will do virtually anything to get what they want. 